Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Cafe Bagheri. Some of you may know that I've been in culinary school. Two weeks ago, we ended up cooking a quiche Lorraine. It's a wonderful, tasty dish. As I was eating that, I remembered a dish from my childhood, cuckoo, which is a patty of eggs and herbs or vegetables that you cook. And in fact, if you want to get a translation of cuckoo, it translates to quiche. So I thought, what if we married these two and then put it in a buttery flaky crust and baked it? Guess what? I've done it several times and it's awesome. So stick around, let's make the cuckoo fusion together. But before we do that, my son Alex, who edits my videos and manages a YouTube account, was telling me recently that apparently only about 11% of you, the viewers, are subscribed to this channel. So he asked me, he said, can you please at the beginning of video ask um, for folks to check to see if you're not subscribed, I would appreciate it as a personal favor to me. And if you decide later you want to unsubscribe, you can always go ahead and do that. Let's watch this. Oh my God, they're already subscribing. It's good. And let's make this cuckoo fusion, okay? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our pie crust. So we're going to use a food processor. Incidentally, this is an identical recipe to the one that we have on our apple tart video. Uh, except it doesn't have sugar. This is a savory crust, right? I've already sifted the flour in this bowl and I'm gonna add it to the food processor, right? So we have some salt. You can use regular table salt or kosher salt. So first we're gonna give flour and salt a few pulses. Now once the dry ingredients are mixed, I'm gonna get my butter from the refrigerator. This is about a stick and a half of butter, and it's important for your butter to be super cold. The concept is that the metal blade of your food processor is going to break up and spread the shards of super cold butter into the dry ingredients, which is what ends up giving you those little pockets of butter that create the flakiness you need, okay? So we're going to add these pieces of butter in three installments and each time pulse it about four or five times, okay? And once in a while, I shake the food processor for the flour that's caught on the sides to fall back in. So one more installment here. And finally, For this particular quiche, because of the consistency we're looking for, we're looking for a mealy consistency, which means I, instead of two or three pulses, I did five or six and, and do a couple of extra ones at the end to make sure the butter is pulverized even smaller. We have about 2.1 ounces of very cold water. We're gonna run this at high speed. This, did you see what happened? The dough has come together around the core blade structure and that tells us the dough is ready. Uh, get some flour on the board. At this point, we're going to roll the dough into a ball. I'll get my plastic sheet here. This is now in a ball, right? What I want to do is I press it down a little bit to get the beginning of the final shape that I want from this. It makes it easier to roll it out, okay? So we're going to chill this for a minimum of four hours. So next we're going to um, chop up all the fresh herbs. Fresh herbs in this case include lettuce, a little bit of lettuce leaves. So we start by washing and cleaning the herbs, the scallions. I have um, parsley, I have cilantro, and I have dill. I will cut them into manageable pieces like this, and then I'll just cut them 
like this a couple of times so that when I turn them around and chop them, they won't be round, right? See, I open them all up like this. So I'm gonna do that to each and every one of them. So for scallions, you've cut them all open and you just go, watch your fingers and just, there you go. So this is the first cut and you basically grab both ends of your blade and run through it in several passes. Real fine chop, what we call brunoise in the kitchen or finer. We're gonna do this to all of the herbs. I'm gonna push this aside and then start with a different kind. I'm gonna remove the stems that I don't want and basically go a couple of passes. So with parsley and cilantro, the same deal as the dill weed, you basically have to make sure you remove as much of the stems as possible. So look at this, see? Any of the significant amount of stems I wanna remove. There you go, that should do it. And then the rest, is good. I'll do the same thing you saw me doing. So all of our aromatic herbs have been chopped. Your scallions, your or leeks if that's what you're using, your cilantro, parsley, and dill, right? So the one last contribution of the Persian side of this fusion is lettuce. The original cuckoo recipe has lettuce in it. I'm using romaine because that's what I had. You can use iceberg or any kind of lettuce that you happen to have around the house. It doesn't matter. So what I would just do is stack several sheets and go this way, turn it around and go the other way. Boom. You need two to three tablespoons for the recipe and you just add it to your mix and you're done. Now we're going to saute our herbs in a neutral oil. So we're gonna to go to our cooktop and saute our vegetables. I start with uh, four tablespoons of my grapeseed oil. Get them shimmering on medium heat. This is too much to put in in one installment. So I'm gonna put half of it in, about five to eight minutes, and then we'll put them aside and put the second half. All right, so our chopped herbs are sauteed. Now we're going to give this a quick stir and let it cool down. Doesn't have to be cold, but just room temperature. Now we're going to get our chilled pie dough. So this has been chilling about four plus hours. I wanna put some flour on the board. There you go. We're gonna roll this out to about half an inch thick and then put it in our pie dish. Very gently push the edges in or the little corners in. So make sure it has an almost perfect fit. Now what you're gonna do is use a small knife. And you wanna go like this around the corner. Now here's the deal about these cutaways. Unfortunately, I usually throw this away because no matter how how hard you try, rolling this out again is not gonna make it perfect and it always has gaps and whatever. So if you figure out something awesome to do with the cutaways from around your pie crust, drop me a comment here and let me know. I push this a little over the edge and then I'll go around and crimp the edge. I'll do it this way, look. There's a thousand ways to do this, you can use a Fork, you can, there are tools that gives you certain shapes and fancy shapes. The sky's the limit. This is what I go with, and it kind of ends up looking country rustic. So, this is now ready to be pre baked. What you do is you get a piece of parchment paper in here, okay? And then I use dry beans, dry legumes of any kind will do. And you keep using them. You probably can use them for 10 or 15 times. 
before they smell or disintegrate. I use a couple of uh, cupfuls uh, and they're just a weight to push down to prevent from bubbling up. So we've already started preheating our oven at 375. We're gonna pre-bake this at about 16, 17 minutes. So it doesn't bake completely, but it's halfway there. So our crust is pre-baking. Our sauteed herbs are cool, room temperature. Now we're going to mix our egg mixture, our custard, if you will. So we're gonna break our eggs using four eggs. Gonna re-whisk this a little bit, break the yolks. This is heavy cream. Got a cup, gonna add our salt. You're gonna have to try the salt and see if you like less or more. And remember, we're gonna add our cheeses. So like Parmesan and, uh, and certain kinds of cheese have more salt, so you have to be mindful of that and adjust for it. Uh, we added our black pepper. Now, one thing that I add to a lot of sauces and, and mixes that I make is a touch of uh, cayenne pepper because it wakes up your taste buds and it just gives it a little, you, you kind of feel it in the back of your tongue and it adds a, a nice um, angle, if you will. So we're going to add our chopped up um, walnuts to this fusion mix. This came from the Persian part of this fusion, right? So now the last item to be added here is going to be our cheeses. You can add whatever cheese you like. We use a combination of cheddar, which we always have in our fridge, Parmesan, which we always have, and I added some Swiss cheese. And what I do is I just basically um, shred them myself. And remember, this is all gonna get superheated and melt in the egg mixture. So you don't have to worry about uh, the size of these little bits, as long as they're small enough. Now, the total weight of all the cheese that goes in this one recipe, in this one quiche, is gonna be about four ounces. I have equal parts of each. So, so far, other than the walnuts, everything that I put in here is pretty much from the French side of this marriage. Now we're going to get our chopped up and sauteed herbs that you saw me make. Oh, this is so aromatic. And this is going to be added here to our batter, if you will. So I'll use my whisk for a few more seconds. And then I'm pretty much gonna use my little spatula and fold all of this. You don't need to work it too much. See, there's some lumps of cheddar there. Well, that should be okay. That will be a surprise for somebody who bites into it. So let's look at our crust. This has been cooling. You remember I pre-baked it. I blind baked it and I used these uh, dry um, beans as weight to push it down. So you can do this. You put it back in a Tupperware or some sort of container. Save it for later use. Now, as you can see, there's some shrinkage around the edges. But that adds to the country, French country rustic look of this. And this is all we need. We're gonna put all of this in the crust and bake it. And that's about the long and short of it, really. We're now ready to bake this. I'm gonna use my spatula to level the top of this. I wanna emphasize that the total amount that you need to cook this is really subjective to the oven you use in. 375 degrees, I did this in a convection oven and it took 50 minutes, five zero, to get the right consistency and get the custard to set. What you want to do is you put it in the lower third. Don't put it up there. Put it in the lower third shelf. Just put it in the middle and set your timer for 45 minutes. For me, because I know 
I've done this several times. I know 50 minutes is what I need, but you start at 45 minutes and go in five minute increments until it's done. Look at this rise. Now initially it gets this rise, but it's gonna flatten a little bit as, as it cools outside. This is ready. So this is our cuckoo quiche. Check this out. Can you smell this, Alex? It's just awesome. So we're going to let this uh, cool down about 10, 15 minutes. It's gonna kind of flatten a little bit and it's gonna be perfectly ready to be sliced and served. Now what I like to serve this with is a little crema. You can do sour cream or whatever. This is a mixture of mascarpone cheese that I had, a little bit of uh, yogurt, Greek yogurt, and a little bit of feta cheese, right? And here you have it. A little beautiful, perfect fusion. Persian, Iranian cuckoo and French quiche. Thank you for uh, spending this time with me. I do encourage you to make this and send me pictures on Instagram at Cafe Bagheri. If you like this video, please hit the like. And I'm sure you've subscribed to this channel, but just check and make sure in case you haven't, please subscribe and hit that little bell button so we can keep in touch. And I look forward to seeing you right here at Cafe Bagheri very, very soon. Can't wait to eat this.